Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is finally here, but is it the salvation that the theaters need? Does it redeem a summer filled with doldrums and duds like Indiana Jones The Dial of Destiny, Elemental, The Flash, and more? Well, I've got a review ready, and we've got the latest box office numbers right now. Alright folks, welcome back to another fantastic video here on the WDW Pro channel. So excited to have each and every one of you joining us. As we dive into this content, if you like content like it, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to the algorithms when you click it. It is indeed the notification bell. Today, the theaters should be rejoicing. Tom Cruise is back. Can he bring that Top Gun style and pizzazz to the box office coffers? It's time to find out. Starting with an article out of Deadline by Anthony De Alessandro, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, lighting up $6 to $7 million in previews, early box office. Look, folks will read this, then I'll give you my review of the film and where I think this is going in terms of the box office. Paramount Skydance's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is looking at $6 to $7 million in previews so far, which is bound to be higher than the Thursday previews of the last Mission Impossible Fallout back in 2018, which did $6 million. Not great though, folks. Let's be uh, let's call balls and strikes here. Let's be fair. Six million dollars, when adjusted for the increase of movie ticket prices, means that perhaps this is not pulling in the same level of audience. Not good. This is according to sources. The figures we're seeing now could go higher or lower, and I do think that that number will go higher. Dead reckoning previews began at two p.m. today. That's yesterday. However, I hear there were PLF fan screenings on Monday, and that a handful of bucks is accounted for in the estimate. Dead Reckoning is one of the longer films of the summer at 2 hours and 43 minutes with credits. Not as long as Oppenheimer's 3 hours, but longer than Indiana Jones' The Dial of Destiny and The Flash. However, the action is unlike anything any Mission Impossible or Fast and Furious movie has ever delivered before. Seriously, that Rome-Italy car chase will make you want to see the movie again. Paramount is going for a Mission Impossible franchise five-day record here with a Wednesday start. Which is smart! given the sequel's length to the limited amount of showtimes exhibitors can program. Disney did not execute a Wednesday start with Indiana Jones The Dial of Destiny, another older dude-skewing film, the studio opting for a Friday launch and seeing $60.3 million over three days before July 4th. So yes, this movie Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is on schedule and on task to take down Indiana Jones The Dial of Destiny, but really, we want to see Tom Cruise top the $100 million mark in those first five days Otherwise, this may not be truly a success, although it should be said that Tom Cruise movies tend to leg out far, far better than almost any other type of film in theaters. Can it do that, though, with uh, Barbenheimer coming up? Well, we'll find out. The best-reviewed Mission Impossible of all time at 98% certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, Dead Reckoning is projected to have a 90 million five-day stateside, 250 million worldwide. And I would like to see that get over the 100 million mark stateside. Last year, the decades-long-awaited sequel Top Gun Maverick posted the best box office results of Cruise's career with $19.3 million in U.S. previews, $126.7 million domestic opening, and $256.4 million worldwide start. Now, what, where are we going to go with uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning? Well, folks, I've seen the film, and just as you can see on the photo right there, it's actually one of the greatest uh, stunt scenes that uh, I have seen in a very, very, very long time. Uh, the uh, the train scene where the train is dangling and Tom Cruise and uh, his co-stars are trying to survive. Now, as I get into my review of this film, folks, we are going to have some very, very light spoilers, but nothing major. Here's what I think about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. The film opens with a great, great, great opening. The uh, submarine scene that you begin with the setup, all of it is fantastic. The choreography, the uh, the the uh, picturesque uh, view of destruction and the, the loss of lives in those in those opening moments is tremendous, and it really sets it up where you say, "Oh my gosh, now this is what a movie is." Where that sort of uh, gets curtailed is when this movie goes to the bad guys, and the bad guys, who many of them are U.S. agents, not all. But they are all played up a little too much in this film. They are all a little too ham-fisted. The acting is needs to be controlled just a wee bit. They come off more like storybook villains from your childhood 
not necessarily uh, like believable baddies. In fact, they come across a little bit like early, early 90s villains from uh, some of these same genre films, and that's not necessarily good. However, Tom Cruise, on the other hand, is giving it everything he has. He is solid, and his allies in the film are pretty much flawless. They are perfectly executed in terms of their acting. There are a few times in this film, and perhaps more than a few times, where when Tom Cruise is in need of assistance with uh, his eyes from the skies, they have the correct answer right at the right time, and they always are able to pull up some sort of gadgetry that helps them in the, the situation. Now, that is part of the course for Mission Impossible, so it's sort of baked in. But it is a little bit too far in, in this movie, and it feels a bit like a pastiche almost. Almost at the parody level, but not quite. However, the action sequences that are in this film are absolutely fantastic. As is said in this article, the chase scene in, uh, in Rome is a wonder to behold. It is a marvelous bit of stunt work. I do have a critique, though, when it comes to the stunt work, and that is that that fantastic, fantastic uh, ride off the mountain on the motorcycle that Tom Cruise has promoted so heavily and the film has taken great lengths to show us, well, it looks better in the original format without the CGI added. And that is something that can be said of several parts of this film. There are quite a few places where the CGI hampers the believability and where I believe if they had just gone with a minimalist approach to the CGI, things would have looked much more serious, much more real. I think about the time that Tom Cruise in a Mission Impossible movie was climbing on the side of a very, very tall building and just how real that looked. I think about some times in this movie where things look ex extremely real. And I think about the, uh, the, the pre-cut footage of Tom Cruise driving that bike off the mountain and how amazing that was. And then I go back to this and I think they overdid it. They attempted to cover up a little bit too much. They attempted to make it a little too stylized. And in doing so, they pulled away some of that tension that the audience feels when they know this is real. By the way, Top Gun Maverick did an awesome job of that back when it had the pilots inside those cockpits and you, you could feel it, right? And in this movie, you should be able to feel it, but there are times when you cannot. That's not to say that this movie is bad at all. No, this is a good movie. However, because the bad guys are playing this up just a little bit too much, and because the story, frankly, is a little weak, well, there are places where this film falls flat. Now, one of those places is the uh, MacGuffin that they're all chasing. And there is one funny part in this movie where, and it's not intentionally funny, but where the uh, one of the bad guys, well, maybe he's not a bad guy, maybe he's an anti-hero, but whatever you make of him, he gets the uh, he gets this this piece of equipment that's supposed to be a key for some sort of computer system, some sort of super intelligence, if you will. And all it takes is for that little key to blink some lights. And he's like, yep, that's the real one. And we're all supposed to sit there in anticipation of the little blinky lights so that you know it's real. And that's that's a little bit, uh, well, lackluster in, in the display of the intelligence on both the script writing and on their belief in what the audience will buy into. The audience, I think, is more savvy than that. So let's go with more than blinking lights. Again, though, Tom Cruise is the guy who pulls this thing through. Haley Atwell is also very, very good in this film. And no, she is not girl boss mode. She is uh, playing out her role perfectly. And uh, this is exactly what Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny could have used, but did not have. Now, where do I land on this film? Well, I'll tell you this. You're going to have a very good time going to see it. It is a popcorn flick. You're going to have fun with your family. And I don't know that I would recommend this for small children simply because of the length of the film. So be wary of that one. But when it comes to should you go see it, absolutely, this is worth seeing. And finally, it does break the doldrums of the summer and give us a film that is worth seeing. Finally, finally, that has happened. Now, is it a great movie? Is it up there with Top Gun Maverick? No, it is not. And I say that with uh, no amount of glee involved because I was really hoping that this would be Top Gun Maverick 2. I really was hoping that this would be a breakout performance uh, for an actor who has already broken out so many times before. However, what we get here is a good but not great film. I, I struggle whether I should give it a 7 or an 8 out of 10. Both good scores, so I'm going to land in the middle and say that it's a 7.5. A 7.5 out of 10 for me, I just cannot put it at either a 7 or an 8. It's a good movie. It's a lot of fun. The stunts are fantastic. Some of the best stunts you will see, but it is not flawless. It's not fantastic in the way that Top Gun Maverick was, and the story is a little bit loose. 
basically what needed to happen here is that on a few different areas, this thing needed more polish. And the funny thing is that in a few places, it needed less polish because it needed to feel more real and more grounded. However, I did enjoy this film quite a bit. I may go back and see it again. And I think that this film will do quite well at the box office. However, because it's not reaching those heights of a Top Gun Maverick style movie, I don't think that it's going to be the kind of film that will leg out to such a degree that it saves the movie business in terms of this horrible, horrible summer. But I think it will perform quite nicely. It will easily leapfrog Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It will easily surpass uh, The Flash. That will be no problem at all. And yes, I do believe that this film will be profitable. And that is always a good thing because if you're not making a profit, then what are you really doing with these movies? Now, this brings us up next to the next two films which have to save the movie industry. We've got Oppenheimer coming up and the Barbie movie. Can they pull what they need to pull in order to lift this entire industry after a June that was hellacious? July is looking much, much better with Tom Cruise helping with the first half. But that second half is going to need a boost from Barbie and Oppenheimer. All right, folks, that is my review and outlook for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. It will make a profit. It is a good movie, but it is not a great movie like Top Gun Maverick. But have you seen it yet? Drop a comment down below and let me know. What are your thoughts on this? What's your review score? I would love to hear it. And please drop a comment down below as well if you think that this is the kind of film that will make a profit. I would love to know. If you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell. Folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing. And just like Tom Cruise is apparently, keep having fun. I just found out to get WDW Pro's information. Where he gets his sources. I can't believe he uses it. Wilton! Wilton! What? We, we got a job to do. We're, uh, it's, it's easy to hack into WDW Pro's uh, computer. You're kidding me. That's awesome. You know any other stuff? Yeah, just uh, jo Jonas Campbell told me. Sweet. Said pro underpaid him or something. A few minutes later. Hack into this thing. It's, it's gonna be so easy. Yeah, this is a hack. Uh, grab this uh, picture over here. Leave it to me. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Wilson. Job done. Uh, what? No, all we had to do was use the picture because he uses face unlock. Now we gotta go to thatparplace.com and sub to him and his team on YouTube. Oh, well, I already did that because I'm smart. Mm.